Friends, I am glad to introduce our beautiful guest speaker for today, Dr. Ana Pauline O. Deguia. Uh, Dr. Deguia, or we call her fondly as uh, Mam Pao, is a graduate of BS Zoology and MS Wildlife Studies at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. And she has a PhD in Environmental Resources from Hokkaido University in Sapporo, Japan. She has been teaching zoology and wildlife courses at the Animal Biology Division of the Institute of Biological Sciences for already 27 years now. Her research um, interests are in the fields of uh, mammalogy, wildlife biology, and invasive alien animal species. She is a curator for small mammals at the UPLB Museum of Natural History. Friends, let us all welcome Dr. Pau Digia. Ma'am Pau? Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Share screen na ako. Okay, good morning, everyone. And thank you for attending this webinar. This study was a collaborative effort of the mammal team consisting of yours truly, Maria Josefa, aka Sweepy Velos of the Philippine National Museum, Renz Alfred Fernando, of the UPLB Graduate School taking up MS Wildlife Studies or MS Wildlife Science and our indefatigable field experts, Joel Sarmiento and Jerry Cantil. Our project leader, Dr. Cecilia Banag Moran of the University of Santo Tomas and Luis Abigail De Loyola, Science Research Assistant also from UST. So today we present the results of our study. Surferizing, ayan, nilagyan ko na ng R kahit mas mahabang i-pronounce. Surferizing mammal finds in the mangrove forest of Del Carmen, Siargao Island. Okay, question muna. What do you associate Siargao Island with? Maybe you can put your answers in the chat box. So sabi, surfing. O si Sir Efren, mangrove forest daw. Yun lang. Mangroves and crocodiles and crabs. Wala nang ibang answers. Type nyo po sa ano. Ayan, si Andy Eigenman, of course. Sabi ni Sir Philip, but virus, ano ka ba? <laughs> Island daw. Okay, so salamat. Maraming salamat. So of course, ayan, Siargao is known not only locally but also worldwide for of course Cloud9. Walang sumagot ng Cloud9. Pero syempre yung surfing nandiyan. In the municipality of General Luna which is dubbed as one of the world's best surfing spots. Now, on the other side of Siargao Island is also an equally famous and favorite tourist spot, the Subba Lagoon, located in the municipality of Del Carmen. Siargao Island province of Surigao del Norte was declared as a protected landscape and seascape in 1996, known as Siargao Island's Protected Landscape and Seascape or simply as C+. And did you know, Del Carmen is also famous for its mangrove forest. With a total area of 8,620 hect hectares, this vast tract of mangrove forest with a single forest block consisting of 4,200 4, hectares is recognized by the DENR to be the largest contiguous mangrove forest in the Philippines. Wow. Now this research project that we did was part of the DOST NRCP research project assessment, inventory and biological surveys of flora and fauna in Del Carmen, Siargao 
Island. And this has been presented as a poster during the 2020 NRCP Annual Scientific Conference held virtually in June. And the results have also been presented to the Bill Carmen LGU in January 2021. So what I will be presenting today are the details of the mammal survey we conducted. Majority of mammalian surveys in the Philippines have been conducted along elevational forest regions in mountain ecosystems. Terrestrial vertebrate studies in mangrove forests are less explored, particularly mammals. And in fact, I was not able to find any published work on mammal surveys in mangroves of the Philippines. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the mammal studies that have been conducted in Siargao and in the municipality of Del Carmen. In 1982, Heaney and Rabor published the Mammals of Dinagat and Siargao Islands, Philippines. There were three localities in Siargao that they visited. So one is Antipolo, Numancia, the other is Osmeña Dapa in the Pa municipality, and the third one is San Isidro, Siargao. Dinagat is by far larger with an area of 671 square kilometers, Siargao only 437 square kilometers. And Dinagat's highest peak is 929 meters, while it is only 274 in Siargao. In case you're wondering why Dinagat had, had more sampling sites. Now, interestingly, uh, Numancia municipality is what is known now as Del Carmen. So there was sampling in Barangay Antipola, Del Carmen, in Hini and Rabor's study. In 1993, Oliver et al. published their paper on cloud rats in the Philippines, preliminary report on distribution and status. So Dinagat has its very own cloud rat, Crateromis australis, and apparently local residents interviewed during their fieldwork have seen cloud rats in Del Carmen. So the figure reads, kung hindi nyo mabasa, con uh, confirmed and reported locations of sea australis on Dinagat Island and Crateromis question mark SP on Siargao Island. So far though, there has been no evidence on the presence of a cloud rat in Siargao. Before 2020, by the way, a study was conducted by Professor Philip Alviola and company in 2018 and based on their unpublished data, they reported 17 mammal species from Barangay Katipunan. So this will be included in the discussion later. But in 2020, Professor Desamarie Fernandez and Ace Amarga published their paper on the accidental misnet capture of Vivera Tagalunga, it's a civet, in Del Carmen Watershed, Siargao Island, Philippines. So you can see there the very poised civet that has been caught in the misnet and caught in the act. And another paper that they published is the first record of Hipposideros coronatus on Siargao Island, Philippines. As uh, part of their uh, Modicera program. Okay, And so this is the photo that they took of the Mindanao round leaf bat. Now, as part of the assessment, inventory, and biological surveys of flora and fauna, our team's objective was simple. It's to determine the mammals that are found in the mangroves of Del Carmen and come up with a checklist. And to accomplish this, we conducted a reconnaissance to select the sites, planned and prepared for our fieldwork, conducted the field work. So we did netting and trapping, and then we processed and identified the species. 
Okay. So their field reconnaissance was conducted from April 13 to 15, 2019. So the team consisted of flora and fauna representatives. We traveled by boat as a group. So ang saya, sa, ang saya, -saya talaga pag recon no? kasi wala masyadong trabaho pa. Okay. But there was one time, ayan, si Sir Emerson lang, he went solo on, uh, because, well, obviously, the canoe was small, and then there were reportedly crocodiles in that area. So, hindi na namin pinurso actually yung site na yan. We also tested accessibility by foot. So, meron namang mga nalalakaran na portions, especially yung mga limestone. But we, we, we failed miserably in this site. This is, I think, Kabugao. And that's not me. Kung ako yan, ano na, um, waste deep na siguro ako. Okay, so ang lalim ng mangrove. So for the mammal sampling, we searched for solid ground for easy access and where we could taste traps and nets. Also, safety was an issue because we were going to do night sampling. So sabi nga namin, di ba, uh, trabaho lang, hindi buwis, buhay. And out of the 20 barangays of Del Carmen, we were able to choose five. So barangays Katipunan, Esperanza, Lobogon, Bitoon, San Fernando. Okay. And uh, we did our actual sampling from August 20 to 28, 2019. This was in 2019. We started with the most accessible site. This is Barangay Katipunan. So the Siargao Islands Wildlife Conservation Foundation Incorporated or SIUSIPI is located here. And they provided also our accommodations. So it is a mangrove forest adjacent to an agroforest. And there were portions uh, of the mangrove where tide levels do not reach the limestone, thereby allowing us to set our traps and nets. In Barangay Esperanza, Nipa was uh, dominant by the edges of the limestone ground where the nets and traps were established. Uh, residences are located approximately 100 meters from the mangrove. So, medyo malapit yung mga Kabahayan. So we had to inform them of what we were going to do and also uh, requested them not to touch our nets and traps. The area was easily accessible for setting up sampling equipment. Now this is Barangay San Fernando. It's an inter-island barangay on the west coast of Del Carmen. And to get there, I think we, we rode, uh, we had to ride uh, the boat for about 30 minutes. And then grasses compose the dominant ground cover with scattered banana, bamboo, and coconut trees. So this was the farthest where the traps could be set as the mangrove was inaccessible. So dyan yung mangrove. Now this is parang this is the mangrove in Barangay Lobogon. Lobog talaga siya. It consists of mangrove patches, including dense stands of nipa near the shore. And this sampling station was reached only via pump boat or canoe within 10 to 15 minutes. So, ayan. And then in Barangay Bitoon, it's an agroforest dominated by coconut trees facing the mangroves. The mangroves are situated eight meters from the shore and are affected by tide, thereby sampling equipment were set within the nearby agroforest area. And the sampling station was reached uh, by hiking for about a kilometer from the nearest residential area. So now let's go to the collection. Okay, collection methods. For bats will, of course, entail netting, setting up of mist nets, and also trapping through setting of harp traps. So wala kaming uh, use of bat detectors. Okay. So collections were done following the conditions set in the gratuitous permit 
that was granted to the team. Mist nets of either 12 meters or 6 meters in length were deployed to survey bats. So 6 to 10 mist nets were installed singly or in a series of 2 to 3 along potential flight paths, near feeding trees, and across open spaces in each sampling locality except dun sa site na lobog. So netting was not possible in the lobogon site. We were also able to set sky nets. So I hope nakikita niyo yung net dyan in Barangay Esperanza and San Fernando. And for insectivorous or microchiropterans, we uh, set one to two museum harp traps along narrow spaces or openings in two sites only, Katipunan and Bitoon. So checking and retrieval, of course, should be done when you have set the nets and the traps and checking of oh, what happened okay sorry for that checking of harp traps were done and bats were retrieved easily for miss nets net watching was conducted at dusk to check for microchiropterans. So remember, these bats have very sharp teeth and can easily escape by chewing on the nets. If you miss to get them, you end up with an escapee and a damaged mist net as well. So we check nets and retrieve captures every hour whenever possible. So this was how we retrieve bats. Notice that we just use our bare hands. But this was pre-pandemic. Okay? During the pandemic, the IUCN SSC Bat Specialist Group issued a recommended strategy for researchers to reduce the risk of transmission of the SARS coronavirus 2 from humans to bats. And this was issued on June 19, 2020. They recommended the suspension, suspension nga yung recommendation nila, of all field work that involves interactions with bats while it considered the risk of human bat transmission of the SARS coronavirus too. Or if not possible, to use appropriate mitigation strategies. So I, for one, I have not handled bats during the pandemic. I have conducted field work, but I have not handled bats. But... Professor Philip Alviola and his team, well, they do so. Okay, pero ganyan ang itsura nila. Okay, so his team, they do handle bats, but they wear appropriate PPEs. And so this is uh, the recommended practice if you want to uh, handle bats during this pandemic. For small non-volant mammals, uh, these were captured through trapping by using a combination of uh, fabricated live traps and snap traps. So traps were baited with thin slices of fried coconut meat, the so famous fried coconut meat coated with peanut butter. And it was, uh, they were set late in the afternoon on the ground near roots or holes or along fallen logs. So some snap traps were tied onto three branches or prop roots of mangroves. Ayan, kita nyo ba? Ito siya. Okay. Mer medyo laborious. So traps were checked twice daily in the early morning and in the afternoon to retrieve captures and rebate as necessary, kasi nilalanggam yung bait, so you have to change it. And in addition, camera traps were secured onto three branches along possible runways of arboreal small mammals in Katipunan and San Fernando. So limited yung sites because, of course, we do not want to 
uh, for the camera traps to be stolen. Okay, so kailangan safe din sila. And aside from uh, netting and trapping, opportunistic searches were also conducted at night. And then other information such as uh, local names of mammals and other mammals inhabiting the mangroves were obtained from discussions with the local guides. And then also incidental captures or observations were also added as data. Now for the processing and identification. So standard external measurements, we call this the biometrics. So for uh, bats, ito yung mga mini-measure, total length consisting of the head and body length and the tail length if there's a tail, ear, the forearm, and the hind foot. And then for uh, small non-volant mammals, such as rodents, we also measure the head and body, the tail, the ear, uh, the hind foot. Okay, and we also take note of the sex, the age category, whether they are adult, uh, sub-adult, or juvenile. And also the reproductive condition, especially of the voucher specimens. And then prior to release, representative individuals were photographed and we were so lucky kasama namin si Flor na napakagaling kumuha ng mga photos. And then all, uh, all the individuals that were released, especially the fruit bats, were given um, sugar water solution before releasing them para naman meron silang lakas para lumipad. And then all... Uh, Captured mammals were identified using taxonomic references for bats, Ingle and Heaney, 1992. And then the other mammals, Heaney et al, 2010. And then the nomenclature and common names follow Heaney et al, 2010. So the voucher specimens were taken, cataloged, and uh, stored at the National Museum of Natural History, National Museum of the Philippines. And then a species checklist was then made, including the common name, local name, residency status, and conservation status. The conservation status of the mammals were based on our DAO, DAO 2019-09 of the Philippine Wildlife Act. So for our results, okay, so we recorded 14 species consisting of eight bats, four rodents, a kologo or kaguang, and then a primate. Out of this 14 species, five are endemics. So there are two Philippine endemics, Ratus everetai and the uh, Hipposiderus pygmaeus, and three Mindanao endemics, the kaguang, the tarsier, and the uh, squirrel. And then seven are native species, meaning they are found naturally found in the Philippines and also in other countries. And then one introduced species and one that is yet to be determined. Now, of, of the 14 species, one, that, one is of conservation concern. So it is classified as OTS or other threatened species in our DAO, DAO 2019-09. So ano ba yung OTS? So these are species that are not crit critically endangered, endangered, or nor vulnerable, but is under adverse factors such as overcollection throughout its range and is likely to be moved to the vulnerable category in the near future. It also includes species that have the tendency to become threatened due to predation, destruction of habitats, and also new species are included as OTS. So compared with the mammals listed in the synopsis of Philippine mammals found in the Field Museum website, so if you have used this, uh, meron silang map, and then if you click on a locality, so lalabas yung list. So you can do your search by location and by species also. 
So ito yung nakalista for the whole of Siargao. And out of this 15, so 15 yung na, nilist ni uh, Kini et al., we recorded nine. And additionally, not on the list are the Tarshir and the three microchiropterans, Megaderma spasma, Hipposideros, Pygmaeus, and Rhinolophus arquatus, arquatus. So basically, this list in the synopsis is, I think, from still from the 1982 part, paper of Heaney and Rabor, and it, need, it needs updating. Okay, so let's go to the species accounts. So this is uh, a kologo or a kagwang or it's also called flying lemur. Kahit hindi naman siya lumilipad at hindi din siya lemur. Okay, so it belongs to order Dermoptera, family Cynocephalidae, and it is a Mindanao endemic or uh, Mindanao Pleistocene aggregate island complex, um, yung dating tawag sa faunal regions. And it is classified as other wildlife species. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya of, it, it is not threatened. Okay, so this is Cynocephalus volans, locally known as Kagu. Now, when we came to the Seussify compound in Katipunan, a mother and juvenile Cynocephalus volans were caught by locals on a coconut tree and were held in captivity for several days already. So they eventually died. So that's the juvenile and were collected as specimens. We also observed individuals, an, an individual on a langka tree in Esperanza. So yung katipunan kasi and Esperanza, magkalap, medyo magkalapit lang sila, okay? So close to where the sky nets were set. And then there was another observation still in Esperanza where an individual was seen on a mabolo tree. So kung mapapansin ninyo, gusto nila yung matataas na puno. So the kagwang or kago is an arboreal folivore. So it feeds on leaves. It is a crepuscular species, meaning they are active during dusk and dawn. And based on the study of Wisschusen and Richmond in 1998, they prefer young leaves of a variety of tree species. So young leaves lang, pero madami naman silang choices or marami silang preferences. And so described as generalized foragers. They also preferred larger trees in terms of diameter and height, according to the study. Thus, it is possible that the species may only be found in secondary or agroforest areas near mangroves, but they will possibly not venture into the mangrove itself. So the primate that we recorded is the Tarsus or the Tarsier, Tarsus syricta or Amag. So that picture is not from uh, Shargao, it's from Bohol. So uh, tertiaries belong to order primates, family tertiidae, and they are also endemic to the Mindanao Paik, and it's classified as other threatened species. So it's of conservation concern. And individuals of the tertiary were observed in solitary, so solitarily, mag-isa, uh, grasping mangrove branches on separate occasions in barangays Katipunan and Bitoon. Now, the Philippine tarsier, they are known to occur within uh, primary and secondary tropical rainforests. They are also known to occur in mangrove forests amongst uh, thickets, tall grasses, and bamboo. However, habitat utilization of the Philippine tarsier is still unknown. In addition, so may na-observe kami, and in addition, an adult male tarsier was captured by a cat inside the compound of Seussify in Barangay, Katipunan on August 29, 2019. Pauwi na yung team, around 6 a.m. So one of the guides 
So the cat with the tarsier in its mouth and immediately grabbed the tarsier from the cat. So the tarsier was already dead when the guide took it from the cat's mouth. So ayan na po siya. Bite marks were found around the neck and face. Nonetheless, all parts of the specimen were complete. So this was collected and th this is now uh, in the uh, Philippine National Museum. So this is an example of how stray, feral, and even free roaming pet cats cause mortality to wildlife. Okay, now let's go to the bats. So shown here are Macroglossus minimus and Aeonycteris spilea. They belong to order Chiroptera family, Theropodidae, and they are native to the Philippines and classified as other wildlife species. Now these two bats, these two fruit bats are known pollinators of some mangrove species. So specific mangrove uh, that are said to be chiropterophilus or bat-loving are sonarasha species. So chiropterophilus flowers are typically drab and usually have a strong distinctive odor that is distasteful to man. Of course, they open at dusk to offer nectar and pollen throughout the night. So ayan, nakikita ninyo, um, the flowers of chiropterophilus uh, plants are often pendulous or brush-shaped, as you see there, and are located away from the foliage, making them easily accessible to their aerial visitors. And they last for only one night since they get quite tattered and shriveled due to the bat activities. Now, this is the common island flying fox. So, mas, mas malaki kesa dito sa macroglosses and aeonycteris. And it has been found to pollinate durian. Yung mahihilig dyan sa durian. Especially the tall trees of durian. As well as kapok also. They are also classified as fruji nectarivorous. And their role as mangrove pollinators in the Philippines is understudied. What is more known is that this species roost diba, in mangrove areas. Other, flying, other species of flying foxes have been observed to display increased roosting in mangroves, especially under extreme hunting pressures. Now, these bats, yung smaller bats, they are locally known as kagi, pwede din uh, paniki, Kurarapnit then, and the larger flying foxes are known as kabog. Pero local names naman can, you know, they can differ. They differ from region or locality to locality. <clears throat> now, other members of Therapody Day that we recorded are Rosetta's Amplexicaudatus and Sinopterus brachiotis. They are also native to the Philippines and classified as other wildlife species. Now, Rosetta's Amplexicaudatus is a known nectarivore and pollinator of durian. So all of you durian lovers out there, okay, ako hindi po, you should be thankful to this bat. So, Rosetta's Amplexicaudatus was the second most abundant bat captured, representing 27% of all fruit bat captures. However, uh, in the study of Galoria and Nunesa in 2014, they also found fruit bits as well as insect parts in the gut of Rosetta's Amplexicaudatus, indicating that probably it is not an obligate nectarivore. Now, Sinopterus brachiotis is associated with secondary growth forest, agroforest, and agricultural areas, and it feeds primarily on the fruit pulp. So this was the most widely dis distributed. So lahat ng netting areas may Sinopterus. And so it was uh, the most abundant 
it comprised 42% of all our fruit bat captures. Now, there's an interesting study by Zalipa et al. in 2016 in their study in Malaysia nga lang. They found that these two species visited Sonerasha species, yung mangrove, that is Chiropterophilus. But their effectiveness as pollinators fails in comparison to Aeonycteris spilea. So, mas associated talaga yung Aeonycteris spilea and also macroglossus minimus in terms of pollinating mangrove species. <clears throat> now let's, so they are also known as Kagi. And let's go now to the microchiropterans. The presence of microchiropterans were only recorded in Katipunan, barangays Katipunan and Bitoon. Although uh, the very low numbers indicate the use also of the areas probably as feeding grounds since various insects are known to occur in mangrove areas. Now, this is Megaderma spasma. It's native to the Philippines, classified as OWS, and it belongs to family Megadermatidae. It uh, roosts in caves, tree hollows, and hollow logs, usually in small groups, and they feed on large insects and sometimes also on small frogs, lizards, and birds even. Now this one is Hipposiderus pygmaeus, belonging to family Hipposideridae, and it's poorly known. This species has been captured in caves also, near lowland forest and secondary lowland uh, forest, and this is uh, a Philippine endemic. And then the third species of microchiropteran is Rhinolophus arcuatus, belonging to family Rhinolophidae. And uh, it occurs in agricultural land, second growth, and primary forest, and is also known to roost in caves. Okay, so common to these three species are that they are cave roosting. And so probably there are caves near Katipunan and Bitoon. And in the study of Professor Philip Alviola in Barangay Katipunan, they were able to record more microchiropterans because they used bat detectors. So microchiropterans emit echolocation calls that may be used in identifying them. Now, what you see there is the nose lift. And the nose lift is used to direct the emitted echolocation calls. And it is also used in identifying the rhinolophids. Okay, so for rodents, let's start first with Sundas curus philippinensis or buot. In Palawan, this is called bising, yung mga squirrel don. So this belongs to order rodentia, family Shuridae. And it is a Mindanao Paik endemic, classified as other wildlife species. So this is uh, widespread throughout the Mindanao Paik in primary and secondary lowland and montane forest, but it is most abundant near agricultural fields. They are active during the daytime, so diurnal sila, foraging both on ground and in trees. And they feed primarily on seeds and fruits. And uh, this was only recorded in Barangay Katipunan. So we only have a single specimen. In the study of Hini and Rabor in 1982 in Siargao, this species was recorded in the three sampling locations in Siargao, yung Antipolo, San Isidro, and Osmeña. So mangrove utilization of this species is still unknown, but mangrove, the mangrove may provide refugia from disturbances. Other rodents that we recorded are Ratus everetai and Ratus tanizumi, uh, locally called ambao. So daga lang sa atin, no? Order rodentia, and they belong to family Muridae. And the Ratus everetai is a Philippine endemic. 
So you see there yung kanilang uh, puti doon sa buntot. Okay, characteristic of Rattus everetti. But also Bulimus uh, species would have that white sa tail. Okay, and then yung Rattus tanizumi if, is of course the introduced and the invasive alien species. Now, uh, Rattus everetti is a Philippine endemic. It's one of the few uh, rodents that is found throughout the Philippines. So, and also among the elevational regions in forest. So it has a broad diet and has tolerance also for habitat disturbances because it has been recorded even in shrubby and agricultural areas near forests. So this was only recorded in two sites, Katipunan and Lobogon. Now, Ratastani Zumi is a human commensal and are indicators of disturbed habitats. And this was recorded in all sites except Lobogon naman. So as an invasive species, this may not affect other native mammals, but this have devastating effects, particularly on birds, as they may prey upon them. Now, these rats have been recorded to occur sympatrically, yung ratus everetti and ratus tanizumi. So based on studies in forest ecosystems, and, it uh, and those studies indicated that ratus Everetai have a competitive advantage over Ratus tanizumi, but we don't know in terms of uh, mangrove setting. Now for uh, this species, the mangrove forest could be regarded as suboptimal habitat for rodents due to the daily tidal inundation. Okay, pero very, ano naman to, very good swimmers. Okay, nakakaswim naman. And studies have shown that diet of rodents in mangroves consisted of marine mollusks. <clears throat> so this shows ayan, the only photos captured by the camera traps that, uh, that were set. Ang nakakuha lang is yung sa bitoon. Okay? And we identified this as Ratus tanizumi. So had we not seen the tail, it would be difficult to identify the species. So yun yung challenge with uh, using camera traps for small mammals. Medyo mahirap i-identify, especially those with look-alikes. No? Mas, mas maganda siya gamitan for the medium to large mammals. So yun yung challenge of using camera traps Aside from the fact na nananakaw sila at mahal sila. Okay, so now one of the highlights of our study is the record of an unidentified rodent species. So siguro sa inyo mukhang uh, ordinaryong daga lang siya. No? And we initially referred uh, to as Ratus sp kasi unknown nga. Okay, um, ratus kasi yung external morphology are definitely ratus. So you see there the spinous uh, guard hairs. <clears throat> so four individuals were captured via snap traps. And alam nyo na kung unknown siya tapos snap trap siya na huli, medyo mahirap siya i-identify because it of course, the snap trap will damage the skull. And the skull is very important in identifying mammals. Pero meron naman na isang intact yung skull. It was collected via live trap. So yun naman ang kagandahan if you use live trap. So intact siya if you want to collect it as a voucher specimen. Now, this was only recorded in the dense mangrove of Lobogon. So that's interesting. And then all the traps were set onto the mangrove branches, of course. Kasi uh, mababa sa yung traps pag ilagay siya sa baba. So definitely arboreal siya. Now, Ratus everetai was also captured in Lobogon. So yung, yung dalawang species ng, well, kung endemic ito, dun lang na-record sa Lobogon. 
and we did not record Bratostani zooming. So this is very interesting. Now, DNA analysis has been done on this, but further morphological assessment, especially of the skull, has to be done to ascertain its taxonomic position amongst Philippine rodents. So nasa Philippine National Museum na rin siya. So per sampling site, we recorded 10 species in Katipunan, Esperanza 7 species, Lubogon 2, Bitoon 6, and San Fernando 6 species. So do not underestimate Lubogon. It has two species, but uh, what if? So yung isa endemic, what if yung isa endemic then? Okay. So pinakamarami sa Katipunan, Katipunan is really the, the most studied barangay. And then um, Alviola et al., what I have mentioned before, recorded 10 additional uh, species of microchiropterans in Katipunan. So that brings the total to 20 species in Katipunan. So yun nga, gumamit sila ng uh, bat detectors. And for the whole Del Carmen, kung ia-add natin yung kay, kila Sir Philip, that will be a, a total of 24 species in Del Carmen. Sa mangrove. So it is highly likely that most of these mammals are facultative users that occupy both the mangrove and adjacent terrestrial habitats. So utilization can be categorized as what Rog et al. 2017 had used. And it's based on their uh, resource use as feeding, for feeding, for breeding, dispersal route between primary habitats, shelter from biotic, stressors, for example, predators and competitors, and abiotic stressors, for example, temperature extremes. They may also use it as refugia from human disturbance. So these are categories that are worth, that are further worth uh, exploring. So our study showed that indeed, mammals utilize mangroves and there is so much more to explore than just an inventory. So sabi ng mangroves, yes, there are mammals here. Okay, so I hope someone out there has been challenged to pursue research in this unique forest type. As a sampling site, mangrove forests, of course, offer difficulties. Foremost is accessibility. Di ba? Mahirap puntahan. Okay? And then, if there are crocodiles or other dangerous animals, that is another consideration. And then, how do you install your equipment without damaging the mangrove, the precious mangrove, of course? Okay? And another, baka issue din sa inyo, sa mangrove maniknik. Okay? And the bites are really itchy. So, but again, the challenge is overcoming these difficulties. So, you might be able to think about innovative solutions. And to conclude, so as ROG et al. 2017 concluded, and we concur, mangrove forests, are considerably more important for terrestrial animals, at least for mammals in our study, than generally acknowledged. Okay, So this study revealed the utilization of mangroves by mammals. The presence of diverse mammals in mangroves indicate that this habitat is an important wildlife zone. The discovery of a possible Novel rat species specialized to a mangrove habitat has important implications for conservation of mammals and in the promotion of Del Carmen mangrove research. And as a fragile ecosystem, control and management of invasive alien 
animal species should be done. So katulad ng ratos, tanezumi, and the uh, feral cats. Further studies in the area should include adjacent and or related ecosystems near mangrove forests. For example, the caves, they are worth exploring. And of course, the ecosystem services of mangrove associated mammals. And so I'd like to share ayan, some photos that we took. This was taken by Sir Moji. Okay, so this is the recon team, the reconnaissance team. And then this is the bird and mammals, mammal teams. So the bird team was led by Dr. Juan Carlos Gonzalez. So yan yung uh, sa thank you very much for the accommodations. And then uh, this is a picture with Vice Mayor Coro, who at that time was the mayor also. So we had a uh, very good support, very supportive um, LGU ng Del Carmen. And we further thank of course, DOST, the funding agency, uh, NRCP led by Dr. Sumagaysay, the monitoring agency, the municipality of Del Carmen, Shargao Island. So the mayor now is Preserfina Mom Baby Coro, and the vice mayor again is Sir Alfredo Jr. Jr. M. Coro, the, the second. Si Mom Gina also assisted us. And of course, uh, barangay, the barangay captains and kagawads really assisted us. And the CUCFI, Shargao Island Wildlife Conservation Foundation, Ma'am Denny and Sir Jess, and our field guides, uh, yung dalawang Ariel. And then SICAT, Centro para sa Ikauunlad ng Katutubong Agham at Teknolohiya Incorporated led by Ma'am Wendy, sinamahan niya kami. And of course, DNR for the permit. And CIPLAS, Siargao Island Protected Landscape and Seascape, represented by the former Pasu Sir jo Joseph Langanlangan and Pasu Miss Celsa Espadero. So thank you very much. And with that, I end my talk. Thank you all for uh, attending the webinar. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Ma'am Pao, for that uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, tama yung sinabi ni Ma'am Pao. Challenging yung nick-nick. <laughs> <laughs> Top share uh, na ako. Ano? Yes po. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, magandang story yung nick-nick. Di -nick. <laughs> <laughs> <Iba? laughs> Hindi ko kakalain na ganun yun. Anyway, anyway si Ma'am Pao lang talaga hindi namin maintindi kung bakit hindi siya kinahagat. Bakit Swerte hindi lang kinap siguro. Hindi ako siya nadudumihan, ng... <laughs> parang hindi na papawisan, parang laging bagong paligo. Hindi lang ako type ng mga lamok at nick-nick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ma'am. Anyway, uh, before we go to our open forum, uh, as promised, meron tayong slight break, meron tayong quiz, right? So, ma'am, ma'am, uh, pwede ko bang matanong? Uh, yes po. Uh, ma'am, compared to the other you know, past studies, uh, may nakita na rin po dati ng mga invasive uh, ano no invasive uh, rodents dun sa mga barangay sa sa Del Carmen and uh, I think you've also managed to observe uh, some um, given that makokompare niyo po ba if there were you know were you able to observe or probably pwede niyo bang ma uh, ma generalize na dumami yung mga invasive na rodents sa uh, mangrove forests. So, uh, pwede namang gawin siya. Kaya lang, hmm. kung, kung if you want to compare, you have to have basis for comparison. So, mm -hmm. maganda talaga na may uh, benchmarking. Di ba? Mm -hmm. Para kung monitor mo later on, then you will see whether these invasive species are increasing or decreasing. So it's important to establish uh, a baseline data 
Kasi right. yun, yun, yung, uh, yun yung benchmark mo eh. And then when you do su- uh, succeeding surveys for monitoring, you will see the trends, whether, okay. whether they are increasing or decreasing. All right. Um, okay. And then siguro last question ko, ma'am, yung, yung squirrel. Um, you managed to record one in in one barangay pero nung sa katipunan itik, lang sa katipunan pero mm-hmm. dun sa as per dun sa inyo pong binanggit na yung sa study po ni ni Sir Larry Hini mm-hmm. I think uh, naka-record sila in three barangays so mm-hmm. uh, ano po sa tingin niyo yung I know mahirap i-generalize but uh, ano mm-hmm. po sa tingin niyo yung probable reasons why uh prob- yun lang po ang nakita niyo or yun lang po ang inyong na-observe uh in that area Um, yung kasing sampling area ni La Hini and Rabor, mm-hmm. for Del Carmen, it was in Antipolo na we did not sample. Mm-hmm. So, hindi namin alam. And then, the others were in uh, Dapa at saka San Isidro. Hindi na rin part ng Del Carmen. So, oo. so, siguro yung mga uh, the others would want to study that. Si, uh, si La Des, I know, have studied the, the watershed and I know may mga nakita silang uh, squirrel aside from meron din ng flying squirrel. Mm, I see. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Ayaw so, kung i-preempt ba kayong yung ipapublish pa nila yun. I see. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, let's start a quiz. I think marami na tayong participants. Okay. Uh, Konti lang ang eh, matapang. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, all of the following are endemic to the Mindanao Paik except Tarsius, Sinus Sapalus, Sundasquirus, and Ratus Everetai. Ayan, dapat italicized yan. Oo, oh, hindi na italicized po itong ano eh. <laughs> hindi italicizable. Okay. Uh, 48% uh, answered um, the Ratus Everetai. Let's see. Uh... It's you know correct answer. Yay. Yay. At least 50% of you ay nakinig. <laughs> Next question. Which of the following is not a member of the order Rodentia? You have 15 seconds. Options are squirrel, house shrew, porcupine, and the shrew rat. Yung mga nagmamamals dyan, baka dapat tama kayo. <laughs> <laughs> Porcupine? <laughs> Tignan natin. House shrew. Bakit, ma'am? Ang house shrew kasi ay uh, uh, from order Yulipotifla. So, uh, kaya ko siya sinama kasi marami talagang akala. Yung bubuit, bubuit hmm. yung tawag nila yung nasa bahay, yung mahaba, yung nguso. That's the house shrew. It's not a rodent. It's, ah. it, it, it's a shrew. And it belongs to order Yulipotifla. So, yung squirrel, yung porcupine, and of course, yung shururat. Yung porcupine po, it belongs to order Rodentia. Mm, okay. So, ang dami pala nagsagot to. So... Kasi, kasi nga, syempre, uh, looks can be deceiving. Mas maganda nga kung picture sana. Eh, diba? yes, Hindi so... talaga mukhang daga ang porcupine. <laughs> okay, ma'am. Next question. Which of the following is used to survey fruit bats? So, netting, bat detector, the transect method, none of the above. Okay. Time's up. And netting got 68%. Let's see. Okay. Yes. So, so, hindi bat detector because because bat detectors are for the ones that do the echolocation. Uh-uh. Why not transect method, ma'am? Nako. So, paano mo itatransect ang mga lumilipad <laughs> na panike na fruit bats? Mahirap po. Okay. So, so netting, net, netting talaga. Invasive siya, oo. But you really have to handle them to identify them. Minsan, ang difference lang yung length ng forearm. Mm-hmm. Diba? Like for Tenochirus, Jagoray, and Minor. Yung ganun. Okay, so kailangan mo talaga ma-handle yung uh, bat to measure them and take the morphometrics. Yes. All right, next question on bats uh, with long tongues are adapted for what kind of uh, feeding habit? Folivory, nectarivory, insectivory, and sanguivory. 
So ang tanong diyan, ano ang sanguivory? Sanguivory blood, blood okay. ang diet. All right, nectarivory. Yay! 82%. Okay. Okay. Good. And the uh, fifth question, microchiropterans have a pointed structure called the nose leaf. I think pinakita ni Ma'am Pao yan with the matching arrow dun sa ilong. And the function of this structure is for what? A, B, C, or D? So ito, okay, mama itatanong ko. All right. So halos pantay ang emitting and directing echolocation calls. And the answer is directing echolocation calls. Ako, ma'am, <laughs> prior to your talk, akala ko um, siya yung nag emit ng echolocation calls. Mm. So, um, so why direct? Why directing echolocation? So, napoproduce siya sa larynx, na emit siya sa nose, tapos pang-direct nila yung nose lift. Mm, so, kung, kung pointed yung uh, nose lift, yun ay rhinolophids pag flat uh, hypocideridae. And then there are some microchiropterans that don't have no slip. So, mm -hmm. uh, pang-direct nila daw ay yung uh, i-emit siya sa nose at saka sa mouth. Uh, siguro question, ma'am. Ano po yung structure na ginagamit nila to, to receive the, the echolocation calls or to yung, detect? So, yung kanilang pina. Yung tenga uh, nila, di ba kaya siya malaki? So, yun yung pang-receive. Ay, <laughs> ang akala ko yung ilong din. No? Kasi mukha siyang radar. All right. So, okay. last, qu last question. I, okay. Which has chiropteropilus or, you know, bat-loving flowers? Flowers that love the bats. And uh, we have five seconds. We have durian, mangrove, the kapok, and the banana. And all of the above. And so magut po ay durian 40% and uh, I think all of the above ay 31%. Let us check the answer. It's uh, all of the above. May, okay, bakit ma'am? Because yung durian, mm -hmm. mangrove, kapok, and banana, they are all chiropterophilus or bat-loving flowers. Mm -hmm. Yung banana daw yung wild banana, nice. chiropterophilus. Pero hindi sila, merong ano ha, in, in, pag sinabing chiropterophilus, meron din na uh, um, they are also pollinated by birds, so ornithophilus. Hindi, hindi sila exclusively chiropterophilus. Okay. okay. Siguro ang, um, kaya na, ano, yung nagriring talaga sa bell ang durian kasi yun yung uh, you know, most economically important among the, the options. Durian lover ka ba? Uh, Kumakain din po ko, ma'am. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. And, uh, oh, ay, sinelay. Sinelay ang uh, five out of six. Siya wow, top natcher. Siya and si Ichan, uh, she was Proud able si to answer everything in 59 seconds. And I hope, Philip, hindi mo katabi si Nelay. Oo nga, baka kinotes mo. <laughs> Joke, <laughs> Joke lang. lang. But uh, we have Ichan and Chris uh, completing the uh, top so maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Uh, let's, let's proceed to the uh, open forum. Uh, just put in your uh, questions in the chat box and I will read it. All right. Let me just backtrack. Um, all right. So we have our first question from Jerome Kabansag. And he says, um, Mampa, what is your standard operating uh, procedure in case of an escaped microchiropteran? <laughs> And a damaged misnet. So, for example, hindi nyo siya unidentified siya. Uh, will you be counting it as an individual and include it in your survey as well? Or do you, do you just uh, note them? Nino note lang as, ano, ayun, escapee. <laughs> escapee. Oo, pero pag na-identify naman, kasi... Uh, minsan kita mo naman pag, pag uh, nag-flashlight ka, kita mo naman kung ano yun eh. Kung mm -hmm. madali siyang i-identify, then you can note. Ano? Pero kung, kung hindi, lalo na yung hipposiderus diadema, ang bilis niya umescape. Tapos nakakatakot siya, di ba? Kasi ang laki niya. Mm -hmm. So, hi Sir Jerome. Thank you for watching. So yun, yun yung aming uh, ginagawa. At least sa sarili ko, yun yung ginagawa. So kung 
uh, naka-escape, hindi identify So, nino-note lang na may individual na naka-escape. <clears throat> okay. okay. Um, Alright, next question. Ay, tapos yung net, Ay. wala na. Sira na siya. <laughs> Depende. Pwedeng tahiin, ipatahi. Uh, pag yung... Uh, yung main line ang ang nasira. Mm -hmm. So minsan pinagtat pinagtatagpo namin. <laughs> Tinatali together pag yung uh -huh. nakain. Pero minsan syempre hindi na magmo-move ng maganda yung net. Okay? Uh, minsan pag sobrang dami na ng butas. So hindi na siya ginagamit. Ginagamit so discard na lang po siya. Order na ulit kay Mang Ed. <laughs> plug in baka naman all right from from Angelica Carsola uh, hello prof uh, congratulations po on your study regarding po sa survey on uh, the mangrove forest are there any studies uh, conducted po sa pagbilaw mangrove swamp forest reserve so it's the former pagbilaw mangrove experimental forest on the mamalian assemblage since uh, since few hours lang siya from Metro Manila. So, uh, may na-encounter na po ba kayo na studies on that area, ma'am? So, um, probably, yung mga, yung, di ba nandun yung pagbilaw power plant? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I think may monitoring doon, ano? Kaya lang, hindi naman pinapublish yung data sa ganun usually. But they are available sa DENR. Pero as far as you know, I have searched, walang wala masyadong studies kasi on on mammal surveys in mangroves. And if you do, if you have done work, maganda po talaga niya i-publish niya. Mm. Okay. So thank you, ma'am. Okay, uh, more questions please. Uh, we still have time from Sandrex Novora. Hello prof, paano po kaya kapag may genetic defect yung animal, paano nila ma-identify? Like um, naka-encounter na po ba kayo na may genetic effect or probably yung nagbabago na rin yung morphometrics niya. Ano po ang opinion niyo doon? Um, hindi naman siguro genetic defect or siguro mutation ganyan. Mm -hmm. uh, siguro yung color, yung albinism, di ba? Yung color uh, pwedeng maiba pero same species pa din siya. As far as genetic defect, ano ba yun? For example, yung uh, merong malformations. Pwede siguro yun, ma'am. Uh, so, madali pa din naman siyang i-identify. Especially kung gagamitin, ang ginagamit for mammals is, aside from the external uh, measurements, yung skull measurements talaga yung importante. So yun. So kung meron siyang external defect, you can examine the skull. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, wala na ba tayong ibang questions? Okay. Uh, from Christian Lucanias. Hi, Ma'am Pao. Meron na po bang known na exclusive mangrove dwelling mammal? Like doon lang siya. Hindi siya alis. Uh, wala, wala pa. So yung unknown namin, hindi pa namin din alam kung exclusively mangrove siya. Mm -hmm. uh, as for ano yan, ha, yung terrestrial mammals. So hindi pa namin alam. And wala, namang, wala pang exclusively mangrove. If you go to Palawan, ano yung nakikita niyong maraming hayop doon sa mangrove? Floor, alam mo? Hindi, ma'am. <laughs> <Ano> <laughs> Yung mga oh, makaka, di ba yung maka? Ah, na, oh, madami sila sa mango. Oh. Wala, wala sa ano. Wala sa... Wala, no, wala, oh, wala, wala sa siyargaw na, na uh, makak. And hindi rin naman sila exclusively mango. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, um, may question ako. Parang related to that. Um, Ma'am, um, meron po ba kayong nakitang common denominator or common food source sa... Uh, na ina-access ng lahat ng uh, mammals na, na inyong na-observe during your study. Meron, meron kaya? Common. Um, so yung mga fruit bats, of course, mm -hmm. yun nga, yung uh, pollen and nectar and then fruits. Yung cynocephalus ay uh, 
folivor, ang tarsier ay insectivorous. So, varied talaga siya. Varied. So, it can make use of all, uh, of various available resources in the mangroves. Maganda rin pag-aralan yan. No? Kasi ba, may, di ba may, may relation po kasi yung, uh, for example, yung height ng mangrove, yung diameter yeah. ng mga trees. Um, it's a very good, ano ba? Mar- maraming maraming pwedeng pag-aralan pagdating dyan. Okay, we have uh, uh, more questions coming in from Josette Hisuan. Um, uh, can I please ask if you have encountered an, an, an unpublished data which... Uh, discuss the effects of tides on mammal activities and their distribution in mangrove areas. Meron, maski baka thesis or gray literature, meron po ba kayo na-encounter on that? Mm. So far, wala pa. Yung uh, tide, yun ngang, yun ngang presence of mammals in mangroves, very mm. limited. So the more yung mga um, specific studies like this. Mm-mm. So maganda talaga, madami talagang opportunities for studying uh, mammals in in mangroves. So I have not encountered yet. Parang ano ano kung kung factor yung elevational gradient may factor din yung ano ba mayro bang gradient pa yung mga mangroves? May canopy ba ang mangroves? Something like that. And meron ding sub canopy. Tsaka yun nga, uh, yung hindi ko nga alam kung nasampulan namin, yung contiguous forest. So imagine mo kung, di ba, kung ang, ang Siargao really pales in terms of the, yung kanyang elevation kasi napakababa lang. No? Pero yun namang ang lawak ng mangrove forest niya. So maganda siyang aralin, di ba? So um, yung contiguous forest niya, interesting to study siguro yun, di ba? Okay, all right. Um, okay, from Alon Velasquez. And uh, first question po ay, how does Ratus Tanizumi compete with Ratus Evertai in terms of resources or survival capabilities in a mangrove forest? So, yun yeah. lang po ng first question. <laughs> <laughs> Ang hirap naman ang tanong mo, Alon. <laughs> so, yun nga, it's worth, uh, it's worth exploring the the they can coexist okay sa mangrove pero yun nga if they are found in forest ecosystems um ang ratus everett i would have the competitive advantage over tanizumi in terms siguro of resources okay so hindi niya hindi niya ma-out compete ang everett ay ng ating ng tanizumi but in 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 mangrove ecosystems well uh, it it remains to be studied Okay, maraming, 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 maraming pwedeng aralan sa mangrove. Okay. So, kakataktong uh, may question mo, Alan daw. And your second question, are there notes or records indicating animals preying on ratus tanizumi in the area? Like, kung ano? Like, um, crocodile sana, no? <laughs> how about mga, may raptors ba doon? Or... Uh, pwede yung raptors, oo. Pero uh, wala, wala akong na-observe na nagpe-pray doon sa Ratos Tanizumi sa area. From Paul Hendrik Goho Cruz, um, what do you think will be the effect of increased tourism on the mammals and other wildlife uh, of Siargao? Um, so considering na uh, um, malawak naman yung mangrove nila. We, we, I think we were just able to sample along the, the ano yan, periphery, no? Yes. So, I, I really don't think that it will affect, it will have a negative effect on, uh, on the mammals. So, sabi ko nga, pwede nga rin siyang refuge, eh, ng refuge mm-hmm. ng mga mammals na nadidisturb na kasi, di ba, wala naman talaga masyadong forest ang ang Siargao. So probably yung iba talaga pumupunta doon sa loob ng mangrove as refuge doon sa disturbances. Sure. Siguro mahir ang siguro lang ay makaka-affect talaga ay siguro bagyo. <laughs> More on bagyo and then yung wind. Uh, anyway, kung inaabot sila doon ng ng uh, strong weather disturbances. 
Tsaka yung mangrove, ang hirap talaga niya pasukin. Di ba? <laughs> yes. Hanggang periphery lang talaga pag oh, survey oh. So kung tourism pati, nakabangka lang naman yung mga tourists tapos tinitingnan-tingnan yung, yung mga mangrove. So yes, I, I don't think magkakaroon ng negative effect lang. Unless nga na yun, nagbago ang policy ng, ng municipality or the province itself na they start using yung, uh, yung mangroves for firewood or kung ano man lang <laughs> kasi di ba actually yun ang makakasira talaga doon sa mm-hmm. sa ating mga inhabitants doon. Saka they have the ano the the walk, yung walkway. No, yung walkway ma'am. Uh, oh. Nandoon lang naman siya sa tabi. So so kung kung hindi naman uh, for example magpo-pollute ano magtapon ng basura ganyan, wala namang negative effect yung tourism. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> parang ano lang naman ma'am yata nasa poblasyon lang naman ho yung yung boardwalk yung, oo yung boardwalk and then another site meron silang parang lighthouse I, I forgot kung ano yung barangay pero uh, Ay, wala namang ta- yung tower parang yung view may, deck oh yung view deck may, may picture pero wala namang ibang structure doon except for you know pupuntahan lang siya ng tourist then Mm-mm. makikita picture, niya yung picture. forest yung after that wala nang wala nang uh, wala nang human activities doon yeah Okay, uh, a question from Chris Flamiano and uh, she's asking what's the difference between uh, kulugos and the flying lemur? So yun nga, um, yung flying lemur, yun, yung, yun din yung tawag sa kologo. Mm. Pero I refer, I refer to it as kologo or kagwang. Kasi kung, if we call it a flying lemur, it will be a misnomer na siya ay flying because it doesn't fly, it glides and it is not a lemur kasi yung mga lemur, they are only found in Madagascar, di ba? Mm-hmm. So yun. So same lang yung kologo and flying lemur. Okay. So for uh, the vernacular, mas mm-hmm. uh, i-refer natin yung kologo para wala tayong ano ba? Uh, or kagwang. No, kagwang, no? Para hindi tayo malito. So from Katrina Erika Manalo and uh, the question is uh, regarding po doon sa nabanggit nyo no, kanina na Tarsier which was uh, you know, caught by a cat. Na-observe, na-observe daw po ba yun usually or is it just an isolated case? Meron po bang initiative na ginagawa or ini-implement ang Siargao to address this if you know, kung rampant man lang siya o hindi? So because we only stayed for for a few days. So yun lang yung yung aming observation but uh, maybe the people of Siusify would know better mm-hmm. if um, isolated case ba siya or rampant. But you know, yung feral cats talaga, they can really do much damage and cause mortality. to wildlife. So, hindi lang yung tarsier, uh, mga ibon din, di ba? So, um, I am also not aware if they are implementing anything to control uh, feral cats. Okay. I think, uh, siguro ito na ang last question unless may hahabol pa. From uh, Josette Hisuan, uh, Ma'am, how can we design a study to determine the mangrove species preference of these terrestrial mammals uh, is it would that be possible so, uh, habitat exclusion siguro yung pwede mong gawin uh, di ba so i nagturo na ng method ano? <laughs> <laughs> i exclude mo yung yung for example kung mayroong agroforest nearby then you put a barrier mm-hmm. di ba para i test mo talaga bang uh, exclusively uh, sa mangrove lang siya di ba So, so siguro may meron kang mga barriers na pwedeng ilagay to uh, test the preference of those terrestrial mammals. Medyo mahirap pero pwede yang pag-isipan mabuti. Pag maliliit lang siguro ma'am na plots or <clears throat> uh, areas kasi pero kung haharangan mo for example yung Oo nga eh, medyo mahirap. <laughs> mahirap siya pero uh, basically yung theory ganun siya no. Uh, tama nga habitat exclusion. Okay. Um uh, from Jerome Kabansag will there be another or a follow-up study on this uh, endeavor and probably how soon ma'am. So we really want to go back. Kaya lang depende sa ano 
sa sa funding <laughs> and especially doon sa unidentified yung unknown uh, we need to get more samples and hmm. or to compare them with uh, other uh, rato species para ma-identify na siya so uh, as of now wala pang follow up study on this uh, endeavor and by and yun nga ano pati eh uh, nasa pandemic tayo ang hirap mag field work ngayon yun yes. oh and um, ano uh, related to that na uh, discuss niyo po kanina you've discussed yung yung when you ngayon pag mangongolekta or magfi field work um, especially for bats eh uh, talaga recommendation na naka PPE would that be also the case pag uh, when you try to handle you know rats and uh, of course other mammals na maari ding sources of uh, zoonotic uh, diseases Yes, so dapat din talaga um, merong mask, merong gloves mm. at the very least. Kasi nga we we do not know baka tayo yung maging cause sa atin tumalon ano at mm-hmm. tayo ang maging uh, carrier at sa atin magmutate yung yung uh, uh, disease, yung zoonotic disease. Meron na ba so, pang mga mga studies <clears throat> ng zoonosis from from of course do sa rodents uh, mayroon po yan pero like yung sa squirrel dun sa uh, kagwang meron na po ba so wala pa wala pa, wala pa. and uh, especially yung uh, nabanggit mo kasi yung squirrel yung squirrel sa Luzon ano na wala mm-hmm. naman tayo so we don't know what it carries and it's spreading uh, throughout uh, south Luzon Diba? From Manila to South Luzon, nag, nag-spread na siya. Yes po. Okay, uh, siguro final question na ito. Uh, again, from Josette, how how can we join this study if ever po may follow-up yung project? Tagasan po ba si Ma'am Josette? <laughs> si Josette, estudyante ko yan dati. Ah, I see. So, I'd like to owe one. Yes, of course. Um, no, uh, when we did the, the survey, sa mammal survey, so I asked one of my students to join si Renz. Si Renz Alfred uh, Fernando. So yes, you can join mm-hmm. projects naman. From I think from the faculty members are open in um in joining uh graduate students to 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 join field works. Okay. Okay, so hopefully matapos na yung pandemia para mm-hmm. no, tuloy-tuloy lang po ang ating uh, collab sabi nga nila. All right, so I think uh, there are no more questions here in the chat box. Oh, okay. Last na lang po daw ha. I think so from Angelica Carsola, ma'am, pwede po bang malaman if kung mag-study ng bats, may mga pwede po bang i-rent na mga nets or traps or uh purchase purchase po ba ng students ang mga equipment? So thank you po. Um for uh, the equipment, yung nets hmm. We do not rent out the nets kasi mabubutas siya. Definitely, mabubutas siya at masisira siya. So it is better for you to have or to order the nets. Pero yung traps, you can borrow uh, or you can rent. Pwede namang borrow na no, floor sa MNH kung store uh, uh, or rent. Student po, kung affiliated sa UP at madali pong kahit pa paano magparent pero uh, yun nga given the circumstances now mahirap po siya uh, ngayon ang siguro ang pinakamaganda po diyan is for um, you know colleges in the state universities especially dun sa mga sa mga areas na would like to conduct their surveys pero mahirap pong makaka-procure ng equipment uh, siguro kung magiging serious po sila sa inyong mga research programs and then you have you get uh, adequate funding uh, kailangan po talaga mag uh, invest on those uh, field equipment. No, oh, tsaka kasi na, nawawala naman ang nangyayari sa traps, nawawala sila. Yes, sa yes field. Po, oh, po. They can easily be misplaced. Like magsakay ng 100 traps <laughs> in one night, 
ang mariretrieve lang is around 70 kasi nakalimutan saan ilagay or... Uh, or may kumuha. Minsan may dumadampot sa field. Yes diba? po. Very attractive po kasi yun dahil aluminum din. Di ba? So, ano, pati yung mga nets, kahala nila pwede sa, sa pamimingwit or sa... Sa pamimingwit, ano. yes. Okay. And yes, of course, if you're going to do trapping and netting, yung sabi ni Ma'am Jude, yes, kailangan muna ng GP. Gratuitous right. permit, yes. Kailangan yung go over the hoops pagdating doon. And uh, last na lang po, uh, sabi ni Chris, uh, <laughs> ano lang, how do we sign up for a volunteer, or sign up as a volunteer to join uh, professors in uh, fieldwork? Siguro... So you just contact your professor mm -hmm. and also show them that you are really willing to work. Ano, kasi ma mahirap din ang trabaho sa, ano, sa, sa field. Okay, tapos kakagatin ka ng nick-nick. Ano, Flor? <laughs> ay, ay, ayaw ko na po. <laughs> All right, so maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Ma'am Pao, for that presentation. And thank the nice uh, discussion. So thank you sa ating mga audience participation. So before we um, end the program, let me just uh, share my slide. And we are giving this certificate of recognition to Dr. Ana Pauline Odigia for serving as a resource person during the 2021 MNH Biodiversity Seminar on Sufferizing Mammal Finds in the Del Carmen Mangrove Forest in Siargao Island, held today, July 7, 2021, uh, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. So, And in witness whereof, the signature of our director, Dr. Marian P. De Leon, is hereby affixed on this certificate. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Pao. Thank you very much. And um, lastly, please go, to, um, we are inviting you to go to our website. It's at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. If you have some questions to throw, um, you can write us at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, UPLB Museum. It's at um, it's on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Just look for the handle UPLB Museum. You could also check out our uh, articles at Wikipedia and Trip Advisor. So, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Ma'am Pao, for accepting our invitation. And uh, stay tuned. I will put the direct link to the evaluation form in just a few seconds. So, with that. Maraming salamat po.